Hi, Bowen. To all our viewers from all around the globe, a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on your location. Welcome to the seventh virtual panel discussion hosted by America's Sri Lankan Photographic Arts Society in Los Angeles, California, USA, a member of Photographic Society of America and the International Federation of Photography of Art in France, FIAP. The objective of this series is to highlight the beauty of Sri Lanka's fauna and flora. I'm your host, Nedini Ratnayaka. We are streaming live from Los Angeles, California, USA, and connecting with our panelists in Sri Lanka. This week's topic is travel photography. Today, we have three panelists, prominent travel photographers whose outstanding work has been widely recognized. So let's get to know them. Our first panelist is Mr. Bandhu Gunaratnan. Bandhu is a senior photo artist of Sri Lanka who is a licensed of the Royal Photographic Society, the British Professional Photographers Association. He is an excellence of the FIAP as well. Mr. Gunaratne is a life member of the National Photographic Arts Society of Sri Lanka and the Photographic Society of Sri Lanka. Mr. Gunaratne is Sri Lanka's representative of Global Photographic Union and the country leader for Sri Lanka at Crossing Bridges Photographic Community. Bandhu began his creative art photography career at the era of analog photography in early 80s. He has won numerous national and international awards. Mr. Gunaratne has served as a member of the jury at 20 international photographic salons patronaged by PSA and FIAP. He has participated in photography related events in 15 countries and was a member of the State Advisory Board for Photography. He has also served in the capacity of the Director of Exhibitions at the National Photographic Arts Society of Sri Lanka and as the Secretary of the Institute of Sri Lankan Photographers and also as an Executive Committee member of Photographic Society of Sri Lanka. Currently, Mr. Bandhu Gunaratne serves as a visiting lecturer of photography at the University of Moratua, Sri Lanka, at the College of Journalists, uh, and also at the National Photographic Arts Society of Sri Lanka. Well, that's Mr. Bandhu Gunaratne. So, uh, Bandhu, uh, we warmly welcome you to the panel discussion today. So, why don't you share with us our, with our audience in few words what your presentation today will be about? Yes. Thank you, Medini. Uh, uh, thank you, Surya, also. Surya is the president of uh, American Sri Lankan Photographic Art Society. And uh, uh, I must uh, thank him uh, very much for inviting me as well as uh, my colleagues uh, Sudha and Rahul uh, for the presentation tonight and uh, for organizing uh, a valuable discussion series of photography subjects. Okay, let's uh, we can look at uh, people in travel photography. That's our topic today. In two different avenues. That is one. Uh, those who are involved in travel photography, people, those who are involved in travel photography. And number two is travel photography pictures depicting people, rather humans. So let me uh, give me a, give a definition for travel photography. What is travel photography? Travel photography is a type of photography that may involve the documentation of areas, landscape, people, cultures, customs and history. So it, it should tell a story. So uh, travel photography is a very diverse subject. Over the years I have traveled and photographed in many countries. Uh, during this time I have managed uh, 
to gather valuable uh, knowledge about making this whole experience more efficient and enjoyable so in addition to uh, sharing some of my photographs tonight or rather today uh, let me talk about how prepare yourself for travel uh, explaining about uh, what photography gear for travel photographer medini well thank you very much mr bandigunaratne so um, we are looking forward to your presentation today so i'm moving to our next panelist our second panelist who's also a subject matter expert so let's get to know him this is mr suda shanmugaraja mr shanmugaraja has been a documentary filmmaker and a commercial photographer for over 25 years he has produced multimedia content uh, for a range of clients from fortune 500 companies to international development agencies including undp un habitat unicef and ILO International Labour Organization his photographs have appeared in news media including Sunday Times and Al Jazeera Mr Shamugaraja's travel photography has been commissioned by Singapore Airlines and Silk Air Mr Shamugaraja is a specialist and a consultant in the fields of broadcast IT and audio visual technologies he is a long time educator and a great resource for many organizations around the world he has conducted lectures at multiple universities including kotlawala defense academy so that is mr suda shangaraja so mr suda shangaraja we warmly welcome you to our panel discussion today So my first question to you can you briefly introduce to our audience the topic of your presentation today and what aspect of travel photography you hope to focus on today Let me start by saying thank you to all the organizers my fellow panelists and everyone who is joining us I travel and shoot images for news documentary and marketing purposes I'm primarily a commercial photographer I understand that my customers are trying to sell something. Airline magazines are trying to sell more seats to certain destinations. Resorts are trying to increase their booking business. Uh, businesses are trying to sell travel experience. In my presentation today, I'm going to use examples from my work. These will illustrate how incorporating people into your photographs can help create content that indicates scale and orientation and provide points of interest and focus. Finally, I will speak very briefly about collaborating with writers and editorial teams. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Shamugaraja, for that explanation. So we will definitely um, I'm going to get back to you with uh, for your presentation um, so i would like to take this opportunity to get to know our third panelist mr rahul pereira mr rahul pereira has over 3 decades of experience working in academic private and development sectors as an ecologist and as a nature based tourism product developer He has a B.Sc. in Biology and an M.Sc. in Geographic Information Systems and Remote Sensing. He also has a postgraduate diploma in Biodiversity Tourism and Environmental Management. Mr. Pereira also has a certificate in Wildlife Conservation and Management. Mr. Pereira is a visiting lecturer at several universities in the fields of ecology, wildlife management. and photography he has been a member and a past president of in the field of ornithology group of sri lanka which is affiliated with bird bird life international and the federation of environmental organizations mr perera has been the director of education of the photographic arts society of sri lanka 
He has trained many photographers in Sri Lanka. He has worked with several international organizations as a consultant. Mr. Raula Pereira is a certified eco guide of Ecotourism Australia and an accredited Savannah guide. Presently, Mr. Rahul Pereira is the Director Planning and Interpretation at Ironia Vacations, a boutique travel company which promotes customized small group tours to Sri Lanka's wildlife and cultural sites and on photography. So a very a warm welcome to you, Mr. Rahul Pereira, and to our panel discussions. So, um, as we get to know you, my first question to you is, can you please explain what aspect of travel photography you are going to talk to us today? Thank you, Medani. And thank you, Suri and all others at the Society for inviting me as well as my colleagues to this forum. And uh, yes, today I'm going to explain or tell what I do when I am traveling. Basically, how to take better images or share a story with a family and friends because we all become photographers and publishers with modern social media structure and advancement of imaging technology. So you don't need most high-tech camera to take better pictures. It is not the camera that matters. It's the eye behind the camera that matters for final images. I think you can see it from Sudha's and Bandhu's images. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Rahul. So we are looking forward to that presentation. So moving back to our first panelist, Mr. Bandhu Guraratna. Bandhu, we are looking forward to seeing some of your great photographs and learning from your wealth of knowledge. So. Please enlighten us on your insights into travel photography in the modern world. The floor is yours. Yes, uh, thank you, Medini. Uh, let me start with the photographic gear that you use for travel uh, photography. As I said earlier, okay, we used to take pictures with our mobile phone. That is the usual procedure at the moment in the modern world because mod uh, from the mobile phone we take pictures rather than taking phone calls isn't it so that is the uh, that is the truth so uh, in in the field of photography uh, we have two choices uh, according to me the two choices are the dslr and the mirrorless we have a DSLR and a mirrorless. So uh, those are the two options that we have. Among them, we'll see what camera is the best camera for this particular uh, subject for travel photography. Uh, for a traveler, volume and weight are crucial uh, points. You know, when you are traveling, uh, you are given a limited amount of uh, volume space because of your luggage and the weight is also crucial because you are given a specific uh, amount of uh, kilos. So the uh, digital SLR, DSLR is having, is consisting of uh, the uh, mirror, mirror mechanism, pentaprism and the focusing screen system. So that those three sections uh, items have been eliminated in mirrorless camera so ultimately because of the element elimination of those three sections uh, pentaprism screen and the mirror uh, <clears throat> the mirrorless camera has become smaller as well as less weight so in that case, no question about it. You prefer you'll uh, your choice will be mirrorless camera. And the other thing is, the most important feature in DSLR is the interchangeable lens facility. 
as and when you want uh, to make your uh, view angle of view or the, your result in your picture, you change your lenses. Likewise, even in the mirrorless camera also, you have the lens changing facility. Same facility as in DSLR. And uh, one may think, uh, mirrorless camera doesn't give any uh, high resolution images. No, that is wrong. Within the modern digital uh, mirrorless cameras are equipped with uh, full frame sized uh, sensors in most cameras. So uh, full frame sized uh, uh, sensors will yield the high resolution, high resolution images. So that question is also not there in mirrorless camera. Then the settings and controls. All the settings and controls available in digital SLR is available in mirrorless camera also. Not only that, you have a uh, pivoted LCD monitor in the mirrorless camera. So you have the facility to um, take pictures without anybody's knowledge holding it without holding it through your eye. So taking, uh, taking of uh, candid pictures will give you a better uh, result sometimes uh, when the human beings are involved. Right. So let's see uh, what are the accessories uh, you need for this uh, kind of uh, photographic work. Uh, tripod is the uh, best friend of the photographer. So I recommend this kind of tripod, which can be folded uh, as small as uh, 15 inches. This, the length is 15 inches. So this fits in your traveling bag easily. So that is very important. And uh, now this is a aluminum tripod, but if you can buy a um, carbon fiber tripod, so that will be much uh, less uh, weight and stronger also, but you have to pay a little uh, more dollars uh, for buying a carbon fiber tripod. Then the filters. <clears throat> filters are concerned. You need a polarizing filter, then a variable uh, neutral density, ND filter, and some graduated filters. Now th these are the basics that I'm talking about. You can have some more equipment also, but these are the very basic features and the equipment. Then a camera lens cleaning kit. That is important because when you go to a place, you never know uh, your uh, front element of the lens may get dirt. If you go to a seaside, uh, you may get uh, salt on it. So you need a cleaning kit. Then a camera rain cover and a raincoat. That's important because we never know what the weather will be uh, when you are going to a place, location. So you must uh, protect yourself. Otherwise, you have to be under a shade and uh, wait until the rain is ceased. So to prevent that, you need a rain cover for the camera as well as a small raincoat that may be a kind of a, a disposable one, very lightweight one. Then the most important other item is a mini torch light because mini torch light is a important item. Uh, when, you, when you go to a place, it becomes dark. So you need a uh, torch light definitely. You can't depend on others. So uh, other things are concerned. Nevertheless, you need additional batteries fully charged for the camera additional batteries and uh, enough sufficient uh, memory cards for you and uh, external hard disk along with your laptop computer. So those are the initial things that you need for your uh, traveling. So uh, let me get on to my uh, slideshow.
I will share my screen. Okay. I hope you all can see my screen. Yes, Bandi, we can okay. see your screen. Okay. Uh, I have a series of uh, uh, slides. I'm starting with uh, this one. In this uh, picture is taken in Sri Lanka. And uh, this is uh, Hasalaka, and this shows uh, a paddy field in the sense uh, it is uh, the processing of uh, rice paddy, paddy field, and uh, water buffaloes are being used. And the importance is most important thing is the, there's a small child there. This is the job of uh, adults, but a uh, small child is being trained for the next generation in the sense uh, to take up the job in the next generation. So this is, uh, I have given a title as little helper for this particular picture. This has been exhibited in many location, uh, many countries and been awarded us. And uh, this is, uh, this was shot in uh, China and this place is called uh, Thousand Pillar House. You can see some pillars everywhere. And this is a complex of houses. And uh, everybody living there is all are uh, old people. And they don't want to go to the city. And you can see how clean it is kept. And you can see the <clears throat> cleaning equipment also by the side. And they are still using old type uh, chairs and so on. These all uh, these chairs are made of bamboo, and uh, he is uh, having a cigarette also in his mouth. And they are playing cards, so they don't want to go to the city and uh, be in a condominium or the new house or whatever. <clears throat> this one is uh, Marrakesh, Morocco. So this is a father and the child. Mm. You can see this uh, construction of house. This is with hay and mud, a mixture of hay and mud. Uh, and even then, the entrance is uh, not very even. This very uh, unfinished entrance that they have in their house, even this window. So that's the story behind it. So it is a very, uh, I don't know their poor situation. Uh, this was taken in uh, Kanagawa, Japan. So this is a, a, a street, street, street seller, street food. Uh, this woman is uh, selling street food. This is uh, uh, corn, she is steaming. And because of that uh, steamer, you get a lot of steam because that adds a color to the kind of uh, impact to the picture. So her face is seen very concentrated on her barbecue. Not only that, uh, he's, she's using some uh, natural wooden panels for advertising. This is a... Uh, street musician in Rundle Mall. Rundle Mall is a very famous place in Adelaide, Australia. <clears throat> there you get uh, several musicians like this playing uh, their music and not that they are beggars, but they are some qualified uh, musicians and they are selling uh, their CDs over here. So the onlookers, now this man is interested in this particular thing and this man is also looking at this. Nevertheless, not only that, look at this child, child is looking at this person. There are some people used to uh, give donations, but some don't care about whatever it is being done. So that is how. Uh, this is a market, vegetable market, vegetable and fruits market uh, in Konya, that is in Turkey. 
So I shot this uh, from about two or three stories above. Uh, these are vegetables. Vegetables are very uh, neatly stored in this particular location. And I have used the very slow shutter speed. Uh, for this, it's very <clears throat> uh, beautiful location to photograph. And you had a uh, transparent type roof for this. Uh, that is how I got uh, perfect lighting to shoot this photograph. And uh, <clears throat> this is in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. This is in front of, a, by the side of a Buddhist temple. This man is selling incense sticks. These are incense sticks. Uh, not sticks, it's rather spirals. So this uh, goes on lighting for, uh, I think, maybe sometimes a day or two. So this is, he's selling for the devotees. And uh, this is a kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, freshwater pearls. You get uh, freshwater pearls done in a lot of uh, ponds around and is being brought to this place. And these people are doing processing of freshwater pearls. This is in China. This is the world's largest freshwater pearl uh, processing city. So I'll show you a small uh, video clip for this. And what is a very, very important thing to consider, I stopped this video for a while because this is a very wet and dirty place. When you are going to a place like this, you must be able to uh, uh, take your pictures without any problem. And you must uh, keep your attention to have your gear in the sense, gear in the sense uh, uh, your attire. attire should be very uh, uh, resistance uh, it should be resist it should resist the water and a pair of a good pair of uh, shoes or boots you can wear a pair of boots is so much better but it's not easy to carry a pair of boots when you're traveling okay uh, I just want to tell you about the uh, location uh, of this uh, particular place <laughs> Okay, uh, this is a fishing village in Nigambu. Uh, this is a photographer's paradise. Uh, this picture was taken at uh, uh, the place called Lellama. Mm. These people are preparing nets for following days fishing. So this is uh, taken in one of the mornings and you can take uh, beautiful pictures uh, in uh, this kind of places. Uh, this was shot in Lombok Island in Indonesia. I am using, uh, I have used the special technique for this. I think uh, those who know photography will know what this is. This is a panning uh, picture. Pictures taken with uh, cameras panning and with a slower shutter speed. 
now in a picture of this nature you have to have some amount of uh, area uh, sharpened now in this case this uh, face of his cow and this gadget is in uh, sharp so even these flag flags <clears throat> this flag also so that is the situation when taking a picture like this uh, this place is called uh, Meblana Culture Center in Konya. These uh, dancers are called whirling dervishes. It's a kind of a, a Muslim cultural uh, situation. It is, it is called, uh, it is said, uh, 750 year old uh, tradition based on teachings of one Rumi, a celebrated poet. And uh, this is one of my interesting pictures. This, uh, uh, this I called it guitar maker. And uh, uh, we all like to listen to guitar music and we all like to play guitar. But have, have we ever thought about what type of uh, paints taking to make a guitar un until you get the guitar from the showroom? So from the see at the stage. So these are handmade guitars and uh, handmade guitars are the best paid uh, stuff for this particular workers. And uh, what, what sort of uh, pain is taken by this, uh, these people for uh, making this guitar? Edini, uh, I will go to the next segment after I think uh, Sudha will go on and, uh, from here on. Thank you very much, Pandu. We truly appreciate that great presentation. So uh, moving to our next panelist, Mr. Sudha Shanmugam. So Sudha, could you please tell us what one must keep in mind when capturing people in commercial travel photographs and also share with us some of your insights into this unique art and profession. Thanks, I hope everyone can see the screen. I'll put it on full. Yes, so that we can see your screen. Uh, my presentation today will mainly be about why and how to incorporate people into your travel photographs. Uh, let us start with context. People in your pictures provide context to what the picture is about. Understanding what is going on with the people allows you to understand what's happening in the photograph as a whole. Though this picture is not about the people, the people seen in here are important to the picture. This picture is actually about this house. This 18th century house in Hoi An is protected by the state. Built with traditional materials using ancient architectural techniques, this house has been a cultural heritage for multiple centuries. Look at what the people are wearing. Look at what they're doing. Notice their casual demeanor. Isn't it immediately apparent that this is a home? It's not a temple. It's not a museum or a mausoleum. It's a house where people live. By the way, these ladies are hand folding beautiful and delicious white roast dumplings, a traditional delicacy in Hoi An. The presence of a person can help tell the story of a place. And similarly, a place can help tell the story of a person. I was the director of photography for a documentary film that was shot and told the story of Tatanstan, the eight sacred places in Sri Lanka where the Buddha is believed to have visited. These photographs are from Ruan Valley in Nandupadakura Kingdom. On the left sits this nun in deep meditation shaded from the scorching sun only by a single stone pillar. The monument we see in front of her is just the base of the stupa. 
The ruin Vilisaya Stupa, built in 140 BC, sits towering over 100 meters in front of this calm and serene nun. This picture is about this destination, but the presence of this nun tells us what kind of place this is. In the picture on the right, looking at me taking pictures of the nun, is an apprentice monk. He lives, serves, and learns at Ruan Melisai. This picture is about the monk. The inclusion of the Buddha statues of the Ruan Melisai that are towering over him gives us a feel into the life of this child and the spiritual journey he has embarked upon. This picture was taken in the beautiful cobblestone lanes of old Alfama in Lisbon. If the two old ladies were not having a chat in front of the building they live in, the viewer might think this is an archaeological ruin or a building damaged by war. People bring context to pictures. Next, let's talk about mood. The easiest way to set a mood in a picture is to bring in people. This backlit picture was shot on the streets of Alfama at night. The relaxed nature of the people here sets the mood of this picture. Imagine if the people were not present here. This place could look like a grim prison system or a horror movie set. Placing people in a picture is an effective method to add mood. In this picture, the woman placed at the edge of the frame is intently looking at something outside the viewer's frame of reference. Her face, hands, and feet point in the same direction. She's even leaning into that direction. Every single part of this bizarre rock is also pointing to the right. The viewer has no way of seeing what all these clues are pointing to. This builds curiosity and a desire to know more. This is Shark Point on the coastal walk to Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia. Giving rise to moods such as curiosity or mystery is an effective method of selling a destination. I also like to involve movement into static pictures. By pairing people with leading lines, movement can be introduced into photographs. In the sitting room photograph of the Dunkel bungalow on the left, I have placed the model at the point where the diagonal converging lines of the windows, the carpet, the table, and the roof meet. By using such a composition, we shift the viewer's gaze from what is close by slowly towards what is far away and finally arrive at the human element in the picture. This introduces movement, a mini journey within the still photograph. And most importantly, an intimate connection at the destination of this journey, a person. Look at the picture of the dining room on the right. Take a journey from what is close by to what is far away. Did you spot a person? Look again, there he is your personal butler at Dunkeld. Our eyes and brains are geared to spot the human form even when it is partially obscured or hidden. This is Keelung Night Market in Taiwan. Night markets are an essential part of the lives and culture of Taiwanese people. The food cooked and served by the sides of the streets is diverse in variety astonishing to some visitors and absolutely delicious. I find myself in a different night market each and every night I spend in Taiwan. When you first look at this picture, you might focus on the people right in front. The viewer's gaze then slowly moves along the street, following the lead set by the lanterns, the rows of name boards, and the shape of the crowd itself. This is a bustling photo, but it's frozen in time. Yet our eyes continue to travel, exploring. Holding my camera just above my head while being right in the center of this crowd allowed me to capture and share that energy of being amongst them. Next, 
let's talk about scale and orientation. Put the person in the picture and you instantly see scale and orientation. What you see here is an uncomfortably tiny, hot, sweaty space, the tunnels of Kuchi in Saigon. The vast network of tunnels was important to the Viet Cong soldiers in resisting the American forces in the Vietnam War. This is one of the larger tunnels. It also had a lamp that threw interesting shadows. We could not stand up in here. I had to carry my gear and crawl into this claustrophobic space to take this picture. Without the person in the picture, the size of the tunnel might be difficult to estimate. Look at this picture. Are we looking up or are we looking down? What are we looking at? What's going on? Now look again. There are people in it. Ah, okay. This is a tall building. It is a space oriented this way. The moment we spot a person, the world orients itself. This is the Holocaust tower in the Jewish Museum in Berlin. Next, let's look at introducing points of interest. Many pictures become more interesting because there are people in them. We have all seen photos of ocean rocks and rolling waves so many times. We tend to tune out when we look at such pictures, except when there is a person in the picture. The brain quickly latches onto the people, holds them as the center of interest, then begins to see the details in the rest of the picture. These pictures were shot on Rakawa Beach on the south coast of Sri Lanka, an important nesting ground for sea turtles. I enjoy the contrast and mood in pictures that are shot just after the sun has set. Spot the human in this photo. There are actually many. This is the Porto Porto in Portugal. Individuals as well as groups of people are found in many parts of this image. I call this dotting with people. By having people placed in various parts of the image, the viewer eventually spends more time viewing and exploring the image. I see a person in the boat looking at something. Another is hosing down the hull. A woman at the back of the boat is waiting for something. A group of people on the opposite bank are waiting to board their boat. Masses of people further upright are having fun eating and drinking in these pop-up pubs and restaurants that line the bank of the river. Suddenly, it's not just about boats in the river in Porto, but a human experience awaiting you in Portugal. A little bit of practice. And we can all take fantastic travel photos. But in order to be a commercial travel photographer, one also has to do a little bit more know how to work with other people. This brings me to my final section about working in, collaborate, in collaboration with people and teams. My work with airlines and travel magazines require me to work with travel writers, editors, and art directors. Pictures and written stories have to work hand in hand. Photographs need to support and enhance the story that is being told. The pictures I'm commissioned to take are often but spontaneous and requires a lot of planning, involving mood boards, location scouting, and production coordination. Often, I'm commissioned to take portraits of people, set in context to the story. For an article commissioned by Singapore Airlines to showcase ecotourism in Sri Lanka, I traveled to Back of Beyond in Big Island. One of the pictures I had to take was of the founder. This ardent conservationist was camera shy. So I sat him in the middle of the forest where he was most comfortable and took this picture from the opposite bank using a long lens. This floating lamp seller is over 90 years old and has been selling lamps since she was a child on the banks of the river Tubon in Vietnam. Today, competition from younger sellers is threatening her very livelihood. 
In order to achieve this mood and feel, I shot this from afar with a, face, with a face lit by the lamps she was selling. Both pictures you see here were shot on the very same street in Portugal. The one on the left is shot using a 35 millimeter lens and depicts reality more closely. This shot might be more suitable for news or a documentary type of publication. The one on the right is shot using a 16 millimeter lens and incorporates a model. Such augmented form of imaging might be more suitable to sell this destination in a travel magazine. Airline magazines often require a human to be unobtrusively incorporated into the photographs, especially in their full page prints. What they are trying to sell to their audience and potential customer is not just a location, but a personalized experience that a destination offers. These photographs were shot for silk care. This is the pool of the Dunkel bungalow, which is part of Ceylon Tea Trails. The view seen from the edge of this infinity pool is the castle rear reservoir in the cold hill stations of Sri Lanka. But the woman in the swimsuit and hat seems to be in a summery mood. When you read the caption for the photograph, it becomes clear. This luxurious jacuzzi is seamlessly built into the pool and is maintained at a warm and inviting temperature all day. I want to finish with this last image, which is one of my favorite because it demonstrates how people, places, energies, and perspectives work together. A work of art called Horizon Field Hamburg by Andrew Gondi was installed at one of Europe's largest art centers for contemporary art and photography, the Tiffelen in Hamburg, Germany. The floor seen here is not the ground. It is a 60 ton platform suspended by cables 40 feet above the ground. It is essentially a super massive swing with a black mirror finish that does not cast or receive shadows. 100 people at a time were allowed on it. When at least 10 of us got together, we were able to make this flow swing. The roof and its reflection, the city of Hamburg and its reflections, the lights and their reflections. Every one of these elements seen in combination sets the stage for the artwork. The people, their movement, their reflections, and their collaboration with one another, as well as the stage, complete the artwork. Thanks to the people in the picture, no two photographs taken of this artwork can ever be the same. This is what makes this photograph one of my favorites. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Sudha, for that wonderful experience taking us through that fantastic tour of those amazing captures. So moving on to Rahula. Uh, Rahula, you've been traveling and working with the environment for many, many years. I'm sure our audience around the world is looking forward to learning a lot from your journey too. So what advice would you give to our viewers about environment related travel photography? Thank you, Mary. I warn everybody. I born is a traditional welcome in Sri Lanka, which means have a long life. And it is not an easy task to present after Bandhu and Sudha, two of the masters in the country. All of you have listened a lot of things to cover on travel photography, basics, equipment, art, commercials, how to sell your majors, everything. So, as I said earlier, let's talk about travel photography in much simpler form for a family album or share with friends or your own pleasure or for a social media. That when I travel, that my 
equipment list is like this. I, as Bandhu said earlier, you have to travel light. So always I use one camera body. I don't carry much more equipment because my job is not a photography. I'm just a traveler. And maximum three lenses, most of the time two lenses. Right? If there is a time uh, weight and uh, hiking involved, sometimes 24 millimeter STM lens, which is very thin and very light lens is the, my only wide angle. Sometimes 70 to 200 lens is the only zoom I use. So with that, that I have given all the information about the exposures and the lenses I used on the, all the images. You can compare and see what I have used for the photography. That uh, these two images are about a lesser known tribal leader in the Eastern part of Sri Lanka which they are associating more sea and water. Yes, as a tribal, he is valuing the traditional norms. So instead of a plate, he's still using the banana leaf for eating. He's carrying his long handled ax as a his symbol of authority. But at the same time, he can't escape from the development so com for communication he's using a cellular phone so that's the story so you can capture the two images side by side telling a total different story what is the pressure from our societies we are giving to the traditional people right? same way this is while I'm travel, uh, walking in Royal Botanic Garden, Peradeniya in Sri Lanka. I saw a father trying to take a picture of his young daughter. And as soon as I saw this shot, I know that he's not taking the best picture of his daughter, which is on the left. So I suggested him different place, on the different location, on the same place, and different composition, which I took as an example on the right. And always traveling means meeting people and creating friendships. So with this picture, I was able to create lifelong friendship with this family. So that's what the world needs these days, the friendship and camaraderie. Uh, though I have traveled a lot of countries, still, I prefer to take Sri Lanka and travel pictures in Sri Lanka. And photo opportunities provided by Sri Lankan landscape or travel scape. This is some East Asian travelers enjoying Sri Lankan tank tradition, on a traditional craft. We are we have more than 30,000 man-made water bodies like this for our agricultural civilization. So there are a lot of opportunities for travelers in Sri Lanka, not only for photography, but to see and experience things. The cinnamon, I think everyone knows what is cinnamon is. Some people say it's a king of spices. And in certain period of time, Arab traders have charged Europeans its weight in gold for the exchange of cinnamon. Even Tutankhamun mummy was preserved using Ceylon cinnamon. And Ceylon cinnamon is different from the other cinnamon, cinnamon cinnamonium cassia. And Ceylon cinnamon produced as a sticks. This is a modern cinnamon processing pack factory. I have used a little bit slow shutter to add the movement of the hand and feel to the image. This, uh, this Chinese boy is actually, uh, sorry, is a Singaporean boy is uh, basically 
loss. He's trying to select a gift for his mother. But there are so much of choice. It's a terracotta, handmade terracotta factory in Udavalava in Sri Lanka. Like the mood in early images, the color also play a very important role and aspect in travel photography. Both Bandhu and Sudha gave very good examples of how you use the color to enhance your feel or a message. This is also a very contrasting color picture of a beautiful boat and people in business. It's a Kampong Park Lake in Siam Reap. Blacksmiths are not an uh, easy to see thing in these days, but still every part of the world, we are you go to a rural community, these people are very sought after technical people, where there is no factory produced things. And he is on a using his traditional furnace to heat up the steel and that actually that amber or coal gives the glittering coal gives the warm feeling to the image this is in far north queensland whatever religion you are belong to every religious place gives calmness to your mind. Though they are belongs to two different cultures, two different civilizations, the Oriental Buddhist people on the left and European Christian lady on the right, both are enjoying the serenity in a place called Sri Mahabodhi in Anuradhapura, Sri Lanka which has the world's longest recorded history of 2,500 years. Moving from Sri Lanka to another ancient culture, Incas of Peru. This Inca lady is using alpaca wool, alpaca fibers to make warm clothing in Machu Picchu, which is 15th century in Casitadel in Andes region. Sometimes you don't need a lot of details to tell a story. This is about Outback Australia. Outback Australia is characterized by beautiful sunsets, cattle and horses, and of course, sundowners. So one image visit all these things in Longreach, Outback Australia. People travel for various reasons. Sometimes travelers provide good opportunities. Here, some European bird watchers are enjoying the tropical highlands of Sri Lanka in an early morning birding walk. With the highland mist, and back illumination, it gives total different mood to the image. Horton Plains National Park in Sri Lanka. Yes, portrait is not a travel photography, but sometimes at travel festivals, you can't stop capturing unusual images. This is Australian Body Painting Festival in 2019 in Kure, Queensland. She is representing Great Barrier Reef very impressive way. Tropical rainforests are challenging environment and always a mystery. You can watch it from below. It's a totally different landscape. But if you climb up and see it from above, it's a totally different landscape. This traveler in a canopy walkway, Tambopata River area in Amazon forest in Peru. Lunch meetings can happen anywhere. 
maybe in star class restaurant or maybe in this case Shuan Tui National Park Office veranda in Red River Delta, Vietnam. One thing to remember, you are only there to record, report and enjoy. You are not the judge of the other religions, cultures or people. So if you are a travel photographer, always keep that in mind. You are not the judge, you are just a temporary traveler through that landscape. Lifestyle of pioneer people is different and harder in anywhere in the world. It may be in Wild West in USA or out back in Australia. It has its own character. This is bush breakfast in outback Australia in Andara lava tubes, far north Queensland. The very rural dental clinic in highlands of Sri Lanka, where there is no power to use modern day machinery. They are using pedal wheel to do the all the uh, clinical drilling and things and use the window lights as the light source of light. So this kind of places are very rare. If you come across any this kind of basic rural setup, always take a picture to record it because it, these things are vanishing very, very soon. Taman Negara National Park in Malaysia. The traditional boats used to transport travelers nowadays. So the, they have lost their income because the world is more modernized, but they have found another way of earning few bucks using the tourism as a source of income. Same way, as I said earlier, the tribal people are at a lot of pressure. This is again Taman Negara in Malaysia, the tribal person. And how much pressure we are giving them to their civilizations, their cultures, their lifestyles. He's smoking a cigarette and wearing a Columbia t-shirt. So all his lifestyle is changing very fast due to the influence from the people travel into his territory. Street vendors at Machu Picchu that when you are going away from the tropical region, always you get the advantage of side lights. And here the high elevation of Machu Picchu gives a lot of moisture and the wet feeling to the image, which add uh, another dimension to the image. Habiton Village, Australia, very old train carriage and train carriage windows and the frame and contrasting color patterns give additional strength to the people's portraits. Back into Sri Lanka, this European father and the son enjoying another local water body, local craft. And the blue sky at that time is reflecting on water, give the strength and character to the image. Okay, I think with that, I have given you ample example of how to be simple and beautiful images for your album. And thank you very much, everybody, for opportunity. And hope you have I have showed you something to take home. It's up to you, Anthony. Thank you very much, Rahula. Uh, that was an amazing journey, and I'm 
I'm sure our viewers around the world appreciated that presentation. So we are very grateful to you for that. I want to go back to Sudha. Sudha, uh, we learned a lot from you today about commercial travel photography. So uh, as we wrap up, will you leave our audience with a final thought about capturing people in commercial travel photography? Yes. Um, see, before being a good commercial travel photographer, um, one needs to be a good human being. Because to a photographer, photographing someone may be for commerce or for entertainment. But for them who are being photographed, it is part of their lives and time they are sharing with you. So it is very important to treat your subject so the thought I want to uh, leave you with is to enjoy your travel photography and respect the people that you meet and shoot while you travel. Thank you very much, Sudha. So um, moving back to you, Rahul, uh, you are a specialist in biodiversity and a travel photographer with many years of experience behind you. What would be your final message to our audience to take away from today's presentation? As I said earlier, there is only one thing I had to stress again and again. You have to keep in mind you are just a temporary visitor. So you don't have any right to disturb or destroy the environment or any culture. Always protect the environment you travel through, respect the culture you associate. That's the message that I can give everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rahul. So I'm moving back to our first panelist, Bandhu. Bandhu, in a final statement to our audience, what is an important fact that every travel photographer must keep in mind and also share with us about the activities um, of the photographic community crossing bridges? I'm sure everyone would love okay, to know. Uh, let me... Uh... Share my screen and show you some of uh, the pictures left in my presentation. It's a quick glimpse. Uh, this was uh, taken in Tamasuya communal water pavilion in, in, a, in a Buddhist temple in Japan, in Saitama. So this is a kind of a ladle. It's provided for uh, refreshing, refreshing yourself. So, and uh, this is a, um, kind of a charcoal factory in Malaysia. And I used a black and white uh, medium to present this picture because it's charcoal is black. So it is always goes with blacks and whites uh, the best. Uh, this is uh, in Indonesia, uh, taking a break of uh, fisherwomen, fisher folk. And you have, uh, this is uh, from Sri Lanka. It's a kind of uh, caravans. They use uh, cows as caravans to transport this uh, uh, rice, processed rice from the valley to the uh, village. And here's a Sri Lankan photograph also. It's a typical uh, village barber salon. So, the story is uh, now this guy, barber, and the friend is sharing a joke while uh, the customer is not interested in. Uh, this is a uh, rice wine making factory in China. Uh, I shot this because of this uh, beautiful uh, sun rays are falling. It's, uh, it adds color to the picture. Mm. This is called uh, uh, plant luzerne. Luzerne. Uh, it's 
difficult to pronounce uh, is for feeding of cows and sheep is also uh, another caravan a donkey this was shot in uh, sri lanka this ruanali say uh, another perspective i saw in uh, sudas uh, pictures is called uh, uh, thing called um, uh, kapruk puja so kind of a uh, religious activity is done by uh, people and monks so here is a mother and child in combination with uh, ducks uh, they are feeding ducks in uh, ibaraki japan so this is a wonderful picture i shot it in uh, turkey this man is selling this is a street vendor he is selling some kind of a drink with sago i think milk and sago if i remember correct and they put uh, cinnamon powder in it so this this is a mobile device he is uh, Uh, transporting that in and uh, it is uh, served as hot for drink uh, this is also interesting photograph this graduation pictures take, uh, are taken by these young students uh, graduates in front of a buddhist temple this is one of the famous temples in taiwan so these uh, girls were taking pictures in various poses so this was one of the beautiful poses and the photographer is in uh, the, one of their colleagues in right hand side so they are jumping and various fun pictures and this is a picture taken in marrakesh morocco is also a caravan is meant for tourism actually this is one of their uh, native costumes only the eyes two eyes are open is in morocco and i finally i like to show this uh, picture this uh, white water rafting in uh, kithulgala sri lanka is an adventure adventure sport is very famous among the foreign tourists as well as local uh, tourists so this has been a very uh, interesting uh, subject so uh, as medini asked me what i am going to say uh, as uh, final uh, when i talk about the crossing bridges it's a it's a uh, organization virtual organization of uh, nine countries so the nine countries are singapore indonesia malaysia philippines sri lanka vietnam south korea taiwan and latest uh, uh, joining is uh, australia this is an asian uh, gathering but uh, australia joined last time so we have every year we have gatherings at one of the member countries so the gathering will be about 100 odd uh, photographers so it's a very good platform to meet uh, other photographers and share ideas share uh, knowledge share experience everything with Uh, and build friendships uh, we have built a lot of friendships with uh, these people and uh, i'm happy to say sudha and rahul have joined me in one of the one or two uh, uh, events in crossing bridges okay uh, the word travel comes first in travel photography so in the travel uh, if the traveler does not enjoy traveling that means he is not doing traveling in a proper way so my advice is wherever you are in the world enjoy the place people and culture and the place people and culture this this joy will automatically show up in your pictures thank you very much suri and medini well i want to thank our three panelists today the three subject matter experts who taught us a lot about travel photography uh, mr bandu gunaratne mr sudha shanmugaraja and mr rahul ferreira so we are getting ready to take a sneak 
peek into what we have in the pipeline for our viewers next week. Let's take a look at it. Okay, well, now um, it looks like um, we are having some technical difficulty pulling the poster, but uh, let me see. Okay, there you go. So next week's topic is going to be wonder of Sri Lanka's marine environment, a very interesting topic and I'm sure the viewers are going to love the discussion. Uh, we are going to explore the splendor of its ecosystem, Sri Lanka's ecosystem, corals, dolphins, and whales. And we have four great subject matter experts uh, for our panel discussion next week. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at uh, those panelists pretty quickly. Dr. Christopher Charles, Professor of Oceanography at Scripps Institute of Oceanography, University of California, San Diego. Dr. M. F. M. Ferros, Dean, Faculty of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences, Ocean University of Sri Lanka. Dr. Nishan Pereira, a marine biologist and a co-founder of Blue Resources Trust a Sri Lankan marine research and conservation organization, and also Ms. Nisha Dushani, lecturer in the Department of Fisheries and Marine Sciences at the Ocean University in Sri Lanka. So that would be our panel for next week's topic, Wonder of Sri Lanka's Marine Development. So I hope our audience from all around the world will join us for next week's discussion as well. Thank you once again to our team of panelists today. Uh, it was a wonderful, great experience uh, going through that journey in travel photography with that informative discussion. We are very appreciative of, of your presence. So thank you.